Bronx. Yeah. Okay, the producers came to my grandmother back in 1980, maybe early 79, 80. Okay. They wanted to rent some of the space from her. My mother had a, an organization called United Bronx Parents at the time. Okay. So we had a daycare center, a big space, and, you know, a few buildings and stuff like that. And they gave her the script and, you know, listen, you know, we're going to be filming this movie. Paul Newman's going to be in it, Pam Greer, you know, this, that, and the other. We'd like to, you know, use your daycare center where people can come and eat in between takes and this, that, okay. and Because my grandmother was a big community figure in the Bronx at that time. Gotcha. Very, very well known, very politically active. And first thing out of her mouth is, okay, how many of my people are you going to employ? No problem, we'll employ, you know, whatever, 100 people as extras, this thing, the other. Can we see the script? <laughs> That's where they fucked up. <laughs> my grandmother read the script. Alone. Which, which, for those who don't know, which many don't know, so what is the, if you could do a quick tw 20 second, like, yeah. what is the, what is the movie? What is the movie about? The movie is about two cops in the Bronx, one older cop, one younger cop, you know, and, you know, one's near retirement, one's near that, but every black and Hispanic character in the movie is either a prostitute, a pimp, a whore, a drug dealer, killer, this, that, and the other. Right. So... Once that was found out, and we had our hands on the script, you had people like Richie Perez, who grew up in, with the Young Lords, you know, form, form together this group called CAFA, C-A-F-A, and CAFA stands for Committee Against Fort Apache, which included, you know, Felipe, Felipe Luciano, you know, Bronx politicians, my grandmother, and we demonstrated against the movie Fort Apache, the Bronx. We went to all their locations, you know, really? demonstrated, you know, made noise, this, that, and the other. And if you look at the movie today, in the beginning of the movie, there is a disclaimer that says, this movie does not portray the beautiful people of the Bronx as pimps, this, that, and the other. We mean no harm. And that was a huge huge win for us mm. because now because at the time again we're talking about the Bronx it was this was after the sort of the benign neglect comment like so this the, the Bronx became a bit of a poster for just the worst the worst of worst yeah the worst of worst I mean the Bronx at that time was compared to bombed out Berlin right, right, during right. World War two I mean was I mean and then you had these destroyed buildings from the, was it the blackout that never got rebuilt, even, or was it even just... before that? I mean, because you know, yeah, tell me. you had the recessions going on at the time. Okay, you know when Governor Carey told the Bronx, "Fuck you, we're not helping you." Yeah. you know this, that, and the other. But you know, you had laws in places where uh, the landlords would burn out the buildings and collect million-dollar insurance policies right. on these properties, the, and uh, which. You know, could have been the biggest crime against humanity mm. today. You know, yeah. hundreds and thousands of people were displaced, killed, this, that, and the other during the, the 70s and, and early 80s when these fires were going on. Mm. And, it, and it's been documented, you know, that these fires were deliberately set to collect insurance money. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's when they said the Bronx is burning. I call it the Bronx is burnt already, but yeah. the Bronx is burning. Thank <laughs> you.